Hey, prop, my literature review is taking forever. I've only got a month to get this done, and I feel like I'm working, 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 and the goalpost just keeps shifting. I'm drowning in a mass of literature, and I can't even think straight. I'm freaking out because the deadline's looming. What do I do? That is exactly the question from you, from one of our submissions, that we're going to dive in today to help you do your literature review faster. And this is something I see commonly in many shapes and forms, but really the same issue comes up again, and it has to do in setting up your literature review with getting the topic right. I say it over and over again that about 90% of your success, not just in publishing, but in having a smooth, easy ride is going to be in setting up a healthy topic, which fills a viable and winning gap in your field. Now, What's going on is imagine a game of football or, or soccer for our North American audience. And imagine in a game of football, if you constructed a playing field that was very tiny, well, everybody would be trying to shoot and score a goal right away. It wouldn't be very interesting. It'd be boring to watch. But on the flip side, what if you set up a playing field that was huge? huge and covered miles and miles and miles well it would take forever to get the ball into the end zone and people would fall asleep watching it it wouldn't be very exciting or interesting and that second i see both situations happening literature reviews when people construct their net of their topic either too narrow and they just don't have enough stuff to review or too broad and this case both of those will slow you down this case is the second scenario so let's turn over to our submission from divraj and hear what he's struggling with and we're gonna step back decipher that together and help divraj find a good way forward so he can finish his literature review in a month and avoid this frustration that you're gonna hear in his voice i'm currently working on a systematic review so for this systematic review when I've run my search stream through Scopus, Web of Science, and PubMed. In total, I've received 26,723 results. I only have one month to finish this systematic review. And after running the, these records uh, through a screening, I found that there was 10,845 duplicates. At the end, I was left with 15,878 records to go through. And after that, I, I screened through these records uh, for those articles not in English, those who were review papers, and those that were not journal articles, which, which left me with around 10,000 articles to work with. So my question to you is, how can I uh, narrow down my results further to be able to have a, a reasonable amount of uh, papers to work with? Okay, so Divar shared a search string. He's looking at the impact, as he said it, impact of AI on the diagnosis and prognosis of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and neonatal seizures. Now, the first thing that immediately jumps out at you about this is the topic. And when we at Fast Track break down a topic, especially for a systematic review, we like to use a PICO model. And PICO stands for Population Intervention, C for Comparison Group, and O for an Outcome. And almost any topic, if you're working in health sciences or the social sciences or, or natural sciences, you can thread into this model. And for it to be well-defined, you need to have at least, at least we recommend at the very least two components. If you start going too far, though, and you have three or four components, you're probably going to have constructed a very narrow playing field. Um, if you only have one, you probably have a vast football field. In this case, we have an area that's actually too broadly defined because we have too many things in the outcome category. So Divraj is looking at some strange bedfellows and they're all very important in their own right, but they don't sit so nicely together. Looking at the impact of AI tools on Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and neonatal seizures. Well, the odd one out clearly is neonatal seizures, but I would recommend as the most simplest strategy to reduce this playing field is cut out either the Alzheimer's or cut out the Parkinson's papers. That's going to leave you focused enough. And if you take out the neonatal seizures and let's say take out Alzheimer's and just focus on Parkinson's, you're probably going to already cut down uh, by a, a factor of three. But let's look at the rest. And here again, you can see the issue that we're looking at these strange bedfellow search terms. And Divraj find helpfully sent his search string. Now, his search has three components, and this comes right from the Pico model. Um, he's got one key term he's searching for here um, that has to do uh, with the outcomes. And you can see some of these outcomes, even as he described it, well, now we got cognitive impairment. Well, that, that can be lots of different things. Dementia, well, that, that's another thing altogether. Seizure. 
these are lots of things. So this outcome is, so there was the way you constructed the topic, but then operationalizing it, you haven't really stayed true to going fishing in the literature for just putting the bait on your line to fish out just that outcome that you want. So I think if we strip this back, get rid of that, get rid of this, and this keyword focus on Parkinson's, um, we'll already do better. And on this, we need to look for better terms of Parkinson's. We use a nearest neighbor method where we stand on the shoulders of giants. We go search for other papers who did a review on Parkinson's. So we don't have to invent something ourselves. We're going to lift and say, hey, Professor so-and-so searched for Parkinson's in this way. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And that's totally okay as long as you cite it. In fact, that's encouraged. You want to do that rather than reinvent the wheel and come up with some funky that gets critiqued you armor yourself up by saying, I'm going to do what that professor did. And so if somebody comes at you, they say, well, you're going to have to have beef with what that professor did and that professor. And th they already passed peer review and it was good enough for publication at a very high level. So, hey, uh, you know, get, get off me here. Um, but that's the way you want to do it. You want to stand on the shoulders of giants and that's how science works. So that's already going to help. The second key term you can see in here is the AI term. And I, I want to see AI included. Um, and so machine learning is good. And I like that you've hyphened here to capture different variants when people write about different things in the same way. But I do want an AI term. So again, use the same nearest neighbor approach and find other lit reviews that search there. And then you've got diagnosis, detection, um, classification, identification. I would, again, I think this identification is going to be quite broad. And this gets us into another topic of two kinds of errors. You have type one errors and type two errors. So you're going to get things with seizure that are what we call type one errors, which are false positives. They're the things showing up in your search that you don't really want. And you're going to throw back to C. And that when you have a mass amount of volume that in the playing field is too big, that's usually the problem. Um, type two errors is a little more dangerous because you can't fix it later on is when you don't even get them in your initial search. And that, that's a false negative. And so it doesn't show up at all. And uh, that's harder to stamp out. And so often I do recommend airing this out and going a little bit too broad to avoid those errors. But um, what's going on here, I think you're going to have a lot of type one errors. And that is what's just putting you on the back foot. And if you try to complete this review with 26,000 hits, I mean, forget about it. We're, we're never going to see you again, Divraj. So if you implement these steps, these two things, and these are two of what I call the four horsemen of the lit review apocalypse, getting the topic right and optimizing your search strategy, you're going to have a so much easier ride. Uh, let me know, put that into PubMed. I think it's going to get your results down to a much healthier initial screening number of about a thousand to 2000, which instead of, you know, you go from 26,000 to 1000, 2000, well, you, you just cut your your time 13 fold. Best of luck to you. And guys, if you're interested in getting a detailed answer to your question, um, pop over to my Facebook group where we can be directly in touch in the DMs. We got over 60 hours of 100% free and valuable live masterclasses, group chats where you can get your questions answered, not just by my, me, but other professors in the community, other researchers who are often gone through or going through the same challenge that you're facing right now. So don't sit there and be stuck. Take advantage of this resource that I wish I would have had as a grad student. And now we're making uh, freely and widely available for the whole world. And I look forward to seeing you there.